Good day, my future healthcare professionals. This is Mom Marge, and we are on a new week for new topics for our subject SPO001 safety and first aid. So for this week, we are going to focus on lesson or module 9.1 that's managing a person with dislocation and fracture, as well as module 9.2, differentiating a sprain from strain. Thank you very much, ma'am, for that wonderful introduction. So, we'll start our topic for today. So, I was assigned um, two topics that we are going to discuss today. So, I'll be presenting this one first. The first topic, I prepared a PowerPoint for it. So, this is managing... So, we have two topics, managing a person with dislocation or fracture and um, care for patients who or p persons who currently had a heat stroke. But before that, we will discuss this one first. Are you able to see the PowerPoint, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, yes sir. Thank you. So before we begin, a pleasant... Monday to everyone and I hope that you had a very great weekend so Monday na naman so we will start our Monday with these two topics so first we are going to discuss um, on how to manage a person who had a dislocation or with a dislocation or a fracture um, these are one of the common occurrences that a person may have in his or her life. Kasi kahit ako, before when I was in grade school, I have experienced this myself, having a fracture. They apply the cast, sling yung arm ko, nagkaroon ng sling for a month, together with a cast in order for my bones to heal. Did any one of you have experienced um, having a fracture or dislocation before? Anyone sa senior high? Ako po, sir. Were you or have you experienced having a cast as well? Um, mild lang naman po yung nangyari sa akin pero gumamit po ako ng arm sling po. Oh, okay. A mild fracture. How about anyone who has experienced um, having a cast because of a fracture? Me po. Me sir. Sa, saan ka nalagyan ng cast? Sa may, ano po, sa may kaliwang, kaliwang braso ko po. Ah, kaliwang braso. So, naka-arm sling ka rin. Opo. Okay. So, these are, um, this condition with our bones is quite common, especially for um, children. Usually, children are the ones um, who fall victim to either dislocation or a fracture because as we all well know, children are very much playful. They um, climb things. May mga nahuhulog sa puno, may mga nahuhulog sa pader, pag umakit sa pader. Before, when I had a fracture myself, I was playing volleyball at that time during our physical education class. Uh, I fell while I was um, about to hit the ball with my arms. I fell on my right arm and upon x-ray, it was found out that I had a fracture at that time. So they applied a cast. I was on an arm sling for a month in order for, he uh, for it to heal. So. Here, we should know the different types of fractures and know the difference between a dislocation or a fracture as well and how to treat this kind of condition for a person. How to give first aid for persons who had or who has a fracture because later on, pag nasa daan kayo or what, or my friend kayo na biglang nahulog, hindi mo alam kung nagpa-fracture ba siya or what, you need to do first aid. You need to know the basics of the first aid 
on patients who has a current dislocation or a fracture. So, what is a fracture? So, this is a break in the continuity of a bone. As you can see here from an X-ray, you can see that the fibula, that's the name of the bone that is seen here on this X-ray, is fractured. So, may balik. Nagkaroon ng break or breakage on the bone. And this can happen due to a traumatic incident on the body. Let's say, for example, the, the person's leg. So, siguro dahil pwedeng natapilok siya ng may, or magkaroon ng falls, this can happen. So, any part of the body can um, fracture, rather, can occur in any part of the body. It can be on the legs, on the arms, on the spine, which is very, very dangerous it it also can happen on our head and if these bones of the body are affected the skull or the spine that can be very dangerous but if it happens on let's say for example our long bones it is treatable but sometimes it can be dangerous as well yung pagkakaroon ng bali sa mga long bones, especially the long bones of the body. So, I added uh, a information with regards to the fracture and I am going to discuss now the signs and symptoms of having a fracture. Those who have experienced having a fracture before, I'm sure you are already familiar with it. Because when I had that fracture um, decades ago, I experienced rin to mga to. So first, once you have an injured arm or any part of the body, there may be or there will be swelling or bruising over that bone that is affected. Kung saan nabali, dun magkakaroon ng pamamaga. Yung swelling. Or kung hindi namamaga, it can be bruised a swell. So, swelling or bruising over that fractured bone. There can also be a deformity of an arm or a leg or an area where the fracture has occurred. So, you can see somehow, baka may umuumbok doon sa arm niya or sa leg niya because of that fracture. Baka yung umuumbok na yun ay yung buto na nung tao dahil doon sa fracture. And, one thing that I have also experienced when I had that fracture years ago is pain over the injured or in the injured area. And it will get worse when the area is moved or pressure is applied. Because when I had my fracture dito sa right elbow, um, it was difficult me, for me to move it. Hindi ko maigalaw yung joint ko na yun, yung elbow joint because of too much pain that I had experienced years back when I was still a kid. And that is true, especially if there is a breakage in the bone. So either pressure is applied, so kapag pinindot mong ganon yung area kung saan may fracture, masakit. Or hindi mo nga gustong ikalaw eh. Kasi the pain it will be worse once you move that fra fractured area. Especially if the fracture has happened at our joints. There is also an inability to bear weight on the affected foot, ankle, or leg. So if, you ha if your lower extremities are somehow affected, of course, it will be hard for you to bear weight. May rapan kay maglakad, of course. Unlike having fractures on the upper extremity sa arms kasi hindi naman weight bearing ang arms natin um, what do you call this hard for a patient to walk or to stand because the legs are weight bearing joints or yeah weight bearing areas of the body there will also be loss of function because you are not able to bear weight 
on those areas that are affected, of course, you are not able to move them. So, there will be loss of function in the injured area. Okay? So, malamang sa malamang, itong mga signs and symptoms na ito sa inyo na nagkaroon na ng fracture dati, you have um, you have experienced these signs of symptoms and you know that it is unbearable yung pain. So, categories of fracture. We have two types, closed and open fracture. For a closed fracture, this is also called as the simple fracture. Meaning, in a closed fracture or simple fracture, as you can see in the illustration here, the broken bone does not break the skin. So, it did not break the skin of the person. Nasa loob lang siya yung fracture. Hindi siya lumabas. Kaya tinawag siyang closed. Because there is no open wound on the patient's skin. But for an open fracture, also called as a compound fracture, it um, this type of fracture where, where, uh, where we see that the ends of the broken bone is going to tear the skin. Like you can uh, like the example that you can see here in the illustration, the end part of a fractured bone has broken the skin. So when your bone and other internal tissues are exposed, this will make the person at risk, at a higher risk for infection. Why? Kasi pag may sugat, yung pasyente, if there is an open wound, the microorganisms, the bacteria that might be residing on the person's skin, can enter through that open wound and can cause an infection on a person. So, if you see that the person has an open fracture, they need to be attended to immediately by a medical person like a doctor, a nurse, or the EMTs. Now we go to the different types of fracture. So transverse. So uh, this is a type of fracture that is straight across across a bone. As you can see here in the picture, transverse. So it it seems like the bone is sliced into two. There's a straight line across it. That is the transverse fracture. Oblique. There's a tilted or diagonal fracture. So as you can see here in the oblique fracture, it seems like the, the bone is divided into two diagonally. So it has split into two diagonally in the oblique type of fracture. For the spiral type of fracture, this affects the area surrounding the bone. Unlike that of the oblique, the line of the fracture in this type of fracture, spiral, from the word itself, spiral paikot siya. Most likely, this type of fracture has happened if the arm of the person or the leg of the person has been twisted. So, pag na-twist siya, kunyari, nakipag-away yung taong yun, tapos biglang na, yung kaaway niya in a twist. Or during a sport, uh, sporting event, nagkamali ng ikot yung tao. Let's say, for example, nagbabasketball. Or, nagkamali ng jump. Big, pag tapak niyang ganun from a dunk or from a uh, basketball shot, napaikot siya, so the leg twisted, nabali yung buto, a spiral fracture can occur because of a twisting motion that has been applied on the person's extremity. So that can happen. Comminuted fracture, it's a break or splinter of the bone into more than two fragments. So as you can see here in the illustration, nadurog yung buto. This can happen during an impact, most especially for a person who has experienced motor vehicular accidents. Mga 
high level of impact has been or a high level of force has been applied on the person's extremity pwedeng madurog yung buto doon so that is comminuted fracture where the bone splinters into several fragments next is the avulsion this occurs when a small chunk of bone attached to a tendon or ligament gets pulled away from the main part of a bone like like what you can see here that lower portion of a long bone is somehow attached to a joint or a ligament or tendon siguro during a pulling motion on the extremity that Lo that smaller part of the bone becomes attached to the main portion of or detached rather becomes detached from the main portion of the bone so these things can happen as well lalong lalo na kapag let's say for example nakikipag wrestling ka nahila yung ano mo long bones or what medyo forceful yung pagkakahila sa long bone yan natanggal yung low um small portion of a bone because of a pulling force that has been applied to the long bones impacted this involves the fractured portion of a bone being forced into another section of the bone so let's say for example here on the illustration the imp uh, this can happen in fall if you fall from great heights let's say for example tumalon ka from a second floor of a building and you jump this can happen because of the force that is applied uh, from that impact from that fall so tutulak pataas yung buto and with the weight of our body it will also pull down on it because the fall will cause the bone to go upwards upon impact while our weight will force the bone to go downward. So, magtutulakan sila. Tendency is for us to have this type of fracture, impacted fracture. So, this can occur from falls. Lalong-lalo na kapag medyo mataas. Na-underestimate mo yung taas nung um, pader na gusto mong talunan or you are going to fall from or yung second floor nung bata kasi may hilig yung mga bata kung umakit kung saan saan eh so this can happen if they jump from um, a high wall or a tall tree for example na underestimate nila pwedeng mangyari no? Hairline fracture, this is a partial break and often affects only a small portion of the bone. And they can be difficult to identify. Kasi pag sinabing hairline, manipis lang yung fracture. As you can see here in this uh, third illustration here, kitang kita na medyo manipis yung break sa bone. This happened, uh, this type of fracture happened to me years back on my elbow. When they took the x-ray of my elbow, they saw a hairline fracture. Yun yung description orthoped, uh, orthopedic doctor na tumigin nung buto ko during the, uh, when they took an x-ray of my bone. So here, this is hairline fracture. Green stick. It occurs when a bone bends and cracks instead of breaking completely into two separate pieces. Kaya tinawag siyang green stick kasi sa green stick for a branch of a tree that is still young, that is still green, if you break it, it will not totally break. It will only bend and crack. That can also happen to the bones of children green stick fracture is a type of fracture that is only seen in children so nakikita lang siya sa bata why because the bones of children are still growing and some of it is there uh, are still made up of cartilages 
yung cartilage na yan, it's a soft tissue as compared to that of an adult bone. So once the bone breaks, it will not break totally. It will bend, but it will not totally break into two separate pieces. Due to the um, young bone. Kasi cartilaginous pa siya. Parang ganun lang sa green stick. O yung sanga ng puno na patatin. Next, stress fracture. This is a fracture that is brought about by repeated actions which increase pressure on the bones. And usually, the bones of the feet are the ones experiencing this. And they are more common on or in athletes. Why? Let's say, for example, if you're an athlete who um, jogs every day, the weight of your body can cause pressure on the lower extremities and you are doing you are overtraining yourself kasi may mga athletes na ganun they, some athletes overtrain themselves in order to you know um, reach more than what they can reach their goal more than what they can achieve so ang nangyayari kapag nag-overtrain sila is they are going to experience this type of fracture known as stress fracture. So those are the different types of fractures. Do you have any questions about the different types of fra uh, fractures, senior high? Wala po. Okay, kung wala, we'll proceed now to this location. So, it's a displacement of the bone from its original position. How can we differentiate a dislocation from a fracture based from the illustrations that I have been showing you? Ano yung makikita, nakikita yung difference? So, you can see here a shoulder dislocation or a knee dislocation. Ay, hindi, hindi to knee. This is elbow rather. Elbow dislocation. So, what do you think is the difference? Sir, yung fractured bone po, yun yung pag naputol po siya, yung break, it, <laughs> wait lang sir, yung fractured bone po, yun po yung, sir, parang sa bone po, is yung naputol po siya. Tapos yung sa may dislocation po, is yung kapag yung bone po, moves out of its joint po. Okay, thank you. Yes, that is correct. So, pag my breakage sa bone, that is more of a fracture. But, for this location, if the bone moves out from its original position, natanggal siya. Let's say, for example, our shoulder joint, pwedeng matanggal yan from its um, position. Basta pag sa dislocation, it is um, always happening from, um, on our or in our joints. Kasi natanggal yung pagkakasaksak ng joint doon sa area kung saan siya dapat nakasaksak. Tulad nito, the head of this bone, the humerus, humerus yung tawag dito sa long uh, bone of the arm, if that gets removed from the shoulder, that is, this location or dito din pwede din sa elbow pwede rin sa knee pwede rin sa hips so they usually occur within our joints hindi tulad sa fracture um, they can both occur on bones or in the joints as well kasi dun sa joint pwede dun nagkaroon ng impact like what happened to me nagkaroon ng crack doon pero there was no dislocation that has happen. But this location can occur because of trauma as well to our extremities. Tulad nun, kapag yun din, may mga ka nakaaway yung tao, nahila yung mga extremities, masyadong forceful yung pagkakahila or what, that uh, this location can happen. 
or na let's say for example um, during a motor vehicular accident as well these can happen so I'll add more to the um, topic of dislocation the signs and symptoms of having dislocation it's quite similar to fractures there is pain of course you are not able to um, move the joint that is affected that's a fifth bullet point siya, because of the pain that you are experiencing and as well as of that dislocated joint how are you going to move that joint if it is dislocated there's also swelling so namabaga siya swelling bruising can occur there's instability of the joint so if you are going to bear weight on that joint you are not going to maintain your stand because of that dislocation Hindi kasi nakasaksak yung ulo nung buto doon sa joint na yon, doon sa socket of that joint. And it, for a visibly deformed joint, bone looks out of place. So if you are going to see, for example, a patient or a person who has hip dislocation, makikita mo yung isang paa niya mas mahaba doon sa isa. So... An extremity, uh, uh, one extremity can be longer than the other because that longer extremity is out of place. Natanggal siya from the joint, from the hip joint, from it, for example. So, pwedeng mangyari yun. There are some dislocations that are congenital pero natitreat din siya. So, pag sinabing congenital, um, it is inborn, most especially of the hips. That is known as congenital hip dysplasia, but it's also treatable. So, yung mga infants or babies na nagkaroon ng hip dislocation, pwede din siyang matreat. Kasi makikita din dun sa baby, mas mahaba yung isang leg niya kaysa doon sa isa. Now, we go to the first aid to fracture and dislocation. We are going to use a paddle splint, tulad nitong nasa illustration, together with uh, a bandage in order to prevent further injury and pain. Because if we suspect the person to be having a fracture, expect natin na nabali yung buto niya. Na pag ginalaw pa niya yan, baka further mag-stick out yung buto dun sa skin niya. So, we are preventing that from happening because that can cause infection later on and it will bring intense pain on that person who has a fracture. And since we are not trained like the doctors who are trained to um, attend to fractures and dislocations, we should never attempt to straighten a fracture or dislocation. Kahit nga kaming nurses, since I am a nurse, hindi, na, hindi rin namin ginagawa yan. We, um, we are not treating. We are just also giving first aid to fracture and dislocation. The one who is going to treat it is an orthopedic doctor or an orthopedic surgeon. Kasi pag ginalaw natin yan, blood vessels and the nerves might be also injured in the process. So if blood vessels become injured, the patient or the person is going to bleed. So pag nagbleed yung tao, of course this can cause death later on. So we are avoiding that from happening. That is why if you see seen someone along the street, Sa pedestrian na, tama, na bundol yung tao. Make sure that that person is not moved. Initially, wag nyo munang gagalawin yung pasyente. Tumao kayo ng help. You call for an ambulance if you have seen an injured person on the street due to a vehicular accident and never attempt to straighten that person. Kung, kung ano siya, kung ano yung kalagayan niya, kung anong position siya ninyo natagpuan, 
i-maintain nyo siya doon sa position na yun. Because straightening their limbs, their extremities, might injure some of their organs in the process. Most especially if the organ or the bone affected would be the vertebrae. Kasi pag sa spine na tamaan yun, the more that you move the spine, the more that you can cause injury on the person's spine. And medication such as pain reliever, so pwede niyong bigyan ng mga pain reliever such as paracetamol, what else? Ibuprofen, tulad nun yung sa alaksan, mephenamic acid, these medications are over-the-counter, so you don't need to get a prescription to buy them. But, in cases, in worst cases of fracture, the victim might need surgery. Especially if, tulad nun, dislocations has hap- happened, have happened, surgery may be needed on that person. Or, for example, an open fracture, kailangan siyang operahan. Now, the mnemonics on the treatment for fracture, so I've added this as well. Take note of the mnemonic price. P-R-I-C-E. P, protect the injury. Stop using the injured, injur- uh, injured limb and put a pad to protect. Kung walang pad, maghanap kayo ng um, piece of wood that can splint the injured limb. Because splinting the injured limb will further immobilize the limb. So, maghanap ka ng malit na plywood or what, basta matigas siya. Pwede matigas na cardboard or illustration board kung makahanap kayo. And apply bandages together with the splint over that injured limb. To further immobilize it. Para hindi na siya magalaw at hindi magkaroon ng further injuries. R is to rest the injury. Rest meaning not to move it. So, ipahinga nung tao. And I, if the pe- person is experiencing pain, one way to relieve the pain is to apply an, a wrap ice pack. Because ice packs can help relieve pain. It will also reduce the swelling. So, um, mawawala yung pamamaga ng pas- uh, pasyente kapag nilagyan mo siya ng ice pack. C is comfortable support. Apply a supportive bandage. That, I- that goes with letter P. Because we use bandages when we apply a splint over the injury. And E to elevate the affected limb to reduce the swelling. Especially if the affected limb are the legs. So we need to elevate them to reduce swelling. So remember, price. E, protect the injury. R, rest the injury. I is for ice. C is for comfortable support. And E is to elevate the limb. And lastly, we are going, one of the first aid that we usually do is to apply a triangular bandage as a sling for the person who has an injury, most especially of the arm. So in order to further immobilize the arm, a triangular bandage is going to be used as a sling. Meron tong mga to sa mga clinics na meron sa schools, for example. So you ask for, if you saw someone, let's say for example, balik to normal na tayo, tapos may mga magugulong kaklase, nahulog or what, nadapa, and you are suspecting your classmate to have a fracture, you can ask for an arm sling for a triangular bandage from the clinic in order to immobilize the affected arm. And you can see here, madali lang naman siyang ilagay. So, make sure that the apex of the triangular bandage is at the patient's elbow. And then, you tie the top and bottom corner around the patient's neck. And make sure that the apex is 
road into a wick para ma-secure yung bandage or yung sling nung taong nagkaroon ng arm injury. So that is what we do initially. The, this is the first aid that we can do. Apply a... Ang pinaka-importante dito sa mga na-discuss ko na first aid is applying a splint to immobilize the affected limb. And if the affected limb is the arm, we can also apply an arm sling. If there is pain, we can uh, uh, we can give over-the-counter medications and apply an ice pack to reduce pain and swelling. So, guys, do you have any questions with regards to our discussion with um, persons or care managing persons with a fracture or a dislocation? Uh, yes, Mr. Meron po akong question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, regarding uh, in connection po sa fractures kaniya, ano po pwedeng maaring type ng fracture kapag sa rib cage na po? Tapos ano mga possible causes pag nagkaroon ng uh, break sa rib cage, for example? Sa rib cage, usually pwedeng um, yung hairline fracture or pwedeng transverse fracture yung mangyari doon pag totaling na na hiwala yung isang part ng rib ng pasyente so it can either be any of them pwede ring comminuted A- any kind of fracture might happen depending on the force that was applied on the person's rib cage and usually na injure ang rib cage if natamaan yung rib cage let's say for example in a motor vehicular accident like my grandfather tumatawid siya nata- na bundol siya ng ano ng bicycle he's already old he's already 83 when he was uh, he had that motor vehicular accident fortunately and thank god na rin na he is still alive nagkaroon siya ng fracture sa ribs and most of them most of the fractures na nagkaroon siya would be hairline fractures of the ribs kasi il- tatlong ribs yata yung natamaan sa kanya and most of them were her- hairline fracture based on the x-ray so pwedeng magkaroon ng fracture sa ribs ang delikado nga lang is a transverse type of fracture because once that happens naghiwala yung ribs o isang part ng rib ng pasyente that bone can penetrate on the person's lung. Pwedeng mabutas yung lung because of the bone that has fractured. So, did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Any more questions regarding fractures and dislocation? Okay. So, kung wala na, I'll proceed to our next topic. 